Hello, it's Jimmy here already. So I have here, is it a Vox? Yeah, it's a Vauxhall combo. So you obviously you've got these in the Fiat versions and all sorts of different brands. But yeah, there's, this one is the Vauxhall version combo and it's been in and out of garages for a DPF fault. So what was some of the story with this? It's in sort of five or six garages? Yeah, they've, they've cleaned it out several times. Seven times it's been cleaned? No, several times. Yeah. Uh, three times in total. Three times? Yeah. Um, okay. And uh, each time it kept coming back again. The, the it, engine would, light kept coming back. And it would last a maximum of two days? Three days. Was, yeah. Three days. Three days. All right, let's get in and see what's going on. Okay, so inside, start it up. I think this should be the 1.6 sort of Fiat engine, if I'm right. So the engine light's on, we've got something over there as well. Okay, so I've got another couple of vehicles I'm working on over there, so I'm going to use this machine on this car today, which is this Moo car. So it's, uh, no, hang on a minute, I'm in the, I'm in the update section, so we're going to go into the auto search. Uh, this tool is the Moo Car 892BT. So if you click more at the bottom of the video, it'll bring you to the description and I'll put a link there where you can buy it with a 10% discount code. Okay, so it's an Opel Combo D. So this uses like the launch system, so it's um, I am very familiar with how it works. Okay, so now we'll hit Smart Scan. Just go through the entire Tire vehicle here, right? So, distance since DPF indicator on without regeneration. P two four A four fault code, particle filter, differential pressure sensor circuit. Well, that seems pretty straightforward to me, to be honest. Um, but the customer was also saying that he was getting regularly a P two thousand and two fault code, and every time they clean it, sort of two to three days maximum, it would come back. Now the problem is obviously, but most people that are coming out there just basically DPF cleaners and they just they just show up and they just want to spray their fluid in and say goodbye that's it um, but we're here to see why it's actually given a fault in the first place and um, fix fix the cause really so so once it goes away we're not having repetitive DPF cleaning and then block DPF and then DPF cleaning again we just want to sort it once and for all or if not diagnose what's going on and go from there just trying to have a quick look at the engine uh, I think it's the 1.3 this one we'll do a reg check on it okay yeah so it's asking me to pick the engine it is the 1.3 I've just had a check it's an 18 plate so it'll be Euro 6 uh, stop start oh, I'm just gonna say no for now I can't see is it gonna stop start it probably has oh yeah it has right so data stream we need to look at the exhaust Distance since region, DPF pressure sensor. Let's see what we've got, what we're looking at here. Well, that's a block DPF. We've got a pressure sensor that's working. Someone said it's had a new DPF 860 kilometers ago, then it hasn't regen since 792. We've got a very, very blocked DPF at 60 millibars of pressure. Okay, so it is strange because with that pressure sensor fault, I was expecting to have no reading on this or a very, very strange reading, but it seems to be reading. Um, so we are going to go back. Let me just have a quick read of that fault code again. Distance sense to regeneration and soot accumulation. No, don't want to clear the fault. Oh, I must have cleared one, did I? There was, I'm sure there was another fault code there. So the confusion I'm having there was that this same fault code was here, but earlier it did say DPF particle center pressure sensor circuit, which was um, giving me a different description, but because it's on Opel system, it's given slightly different. Um, what you can do sometimes with these as well is, let's just, out of interest go in and look at it as a Fiat so if we go to diagonals 
we search for a Fiat on here. Let's just see if the Fiat system gives you a different description. It's going as a Fiat system, it should come up as a Fiat Doblo. No, it's not recognised. Let's try and manually select it. Fiat Doblo. Oh, I don't know which one it is. Try uh, no. Yes. Double one. What's that? This one. All right. So it says particle filter clogged. So it's just basically just giving you the same information there. There we go. Go back, quit. Wait, now the strange thing is here. I was, I was, I was looking at first. I thought, oh, this is going to be too easy. When I saw it had a circuit issue with the DPF pressure sensor, but apparently it doesn't. But we're going to check it over and confirm that the pressure sensor is working. But the thing is here, we've got a block DPF that's been cleaned not so long ago, and there isn't an underlying fault registered here that I know that would, something that would inhibit it from from doing its region. But it hasn't tried to do a region for. 500 miles or 800 kilometers, whatever it was, and the um, question is why. Uh, maybe when it was clean before it just didn't come down clean, maybe they they put cleaner in but it's still a block DPF, and that's probably why now it's it's got the engine light back on. Unfortunately for that, I think I might need to try and clean it myself to get an answer on that, but if that's the case, maybe we could take it off, back flush it, to clean it, clean it a bit better. I mean, it's done 95,000 miles, so it's it's possible that it's got ash build up, or even a damaged DPF. Okay, so what I've done is I've used the bore scope. We've gone down in here. We've confirmed that there's no damage on the front of the catalyst. We can't see the actual face of the DPF. We've, we've looked at the back of the turbo to make sure that it's not passing oil, and that's all fine. So what I've done is going in through the pressure sensor for the DPF. We're going to put the cleaning fluid in there. So there's either two options here, someone hasn't cleaned it properly or it's, it's just not cleanable while it's on the car. So we're going to confirm that now by just attempting to clean it. So the compressor is running at 8 to 9 bar. We're using Launch UK fluid. This is going in there. Okay, we're going to get in, hold the revs up. Say 3000 RPM. So that needs to come down to, I'd say, 40 to 50 to be a successful clean. So I'm a bit surprised it's come down that low, to be honest. I weren't expecting to. Let's see where we are at idle. Yeah, we're still at 12 or 13, so it's still too high. So we're smoking a little bit more than that just a minute ago, but it's calming down a little bit. Right. It's down to 492%. See, it's Oh, it's going up. Yes. And if the soot accumulation is going up, it still thinks that the pressure is too high. So that would mean 40 millibars of pressure is still too high for the sexual. Whatever way the ECU is programmed, where the ECU wants the pressure to be, if the pressure is lower than it wants to be, the soot will come down. If it's higher than it wants to be, the soot goes up. So now I'm just going to clear the fall codes for a minute. We'll take it on a test drive, see what's going on. And we're going to go into these special functions here. Uh, we'll reset the DPF and we're going to reset the engine oil as well. Because if the engine oil hasn't been reset, then it won't regen. Okay, now we've reset everything. We've got it on idle. It's still at 14, 15 millibars of pressure. So like I thought, it's a little bit too high. You can see it's fluctuating a bit. But we're going to take it on a test drive, see does it do its own region and see where we are with our pressure after it's, it's had a, a, a decent test drive. Okay so now we are idling, we've just done a test drive 15 kilometers. we still have 21 millibars pressure, 111% on the DPF so yeah that is 
not good enough, unfortunately. Right, so it looks like it's either going to need a new DPF or it's going to need a removal and a back flush. Okay, so we've skipped a bit, but yeah, we've taken the DPF off. Like I said, there's no oil exiting from the turbo, just a bit of soot. So here is the DPF itself. You can see the clamp here, clamp at the bottom, a little bit of oil around the outside of the casing. So we can see that that oil has come from that gasket there, just just on the front end of the turbo. Okay, so we're now going to get that up and we're going to connect it onto our machine here. Again, this is the Carbon Clean DCS16 machine. Okay, so we're just pumping the water pressure in, fill the DPF up with water, and we can get ready to blast it through. Okay, now we can hit blast. And again. Not really much water coming out there, is it? And again. Okay, so we've just taken out the DPF from the machine and here is we've just really found a reason why it's not, not been cleaning. Look at the DPF. It's literally turning to dust. Scrape all that up and weigh it in. Okay, the problem is now is I've just rang my suppliers. Nobody's got a DPF for this van. We're gonna have to refit this old one. Um, and I'd be interested to see what the pressure says it is at now. And uh, really, we're gonna have to order a new DPF, come back and get it fitted on it. Okay, so we've put the DPF back on this van and it's still sitting at 10 or 11 millibars of pressure somehow. But anyway, regardless, it does need a new DPF. But yeah, maybe in the future, we might see us fitting a new one. But we'll wait until that happens and see you on the next video. Again